Hi, everybody. This is Amy Marks. Um, I'm very excited to be with you um, this early evening. Um, we have a great speaker. Um, but before we start, I want to um, make sure that um, you're aware that we are um, going to be recording the event. And so if you have, um, you know, uh, any questions, we invite you to um, put write them down in chat. I will ask them um, to Gary after the presentation. Um, we think the presentation will be about 45 minutes with another 15 for Q&A. Um, and I ask that you uh, mute yourselves so that um, we can eliminate some um, background noise, uh, especially as we um, record. So our speaker today is um, Gary Drastel. He's um, joining us from the UK and he's gonna be talking about a commission that he did at the Stanford Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. He had, it's actually, it's the making of two mosaic floors. And he'll get into that in a bit. Um, but he, he's internationally recognized. Um, he specializes in mosaic and mural art for architecture and landscape. So Gary, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and share your screen. Great, okay. So um, hi everyone, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's really nice to talk to you. Like um, Amy said, I'm gonna be talking about a project I did at Stanford um, a couple of years ago. Uh, the, the reason I thought this project would be quite a, a good one to speak about is partly because unlike most of my projects, it's actually quite well documented. Um, I normally find myself too busy to take pictures and I, I forget. <laughs> so, so that's a good one reason to do this. But also this is quite, it's, it's a big project and it's got some quite interesting unusual aspects to it in terms of um, the sort of technical process we went through to do it. Um, some of you might know that my particular thing is working in the paper face reverse technique. So uh, this series, this set of mosaics were all done in that technique. Anyway, anyway, we'll see that as we come on to it. Do I need to press a button to share my screen? Yes, you do. Okay. According to this, yeah, I am doing it already. Oh, um, do you see um, a ah, small? A small. I, I see your first slide, um, a, a miniature in the upper right hand corner of my oh, screen. Okay, sorry. So, so if you double click on that, you, you probably will get back into your slides. Is that it? No. I don't seem to have my, sorry. I don't. Um, maybe we should try it again. Um, let me just make sure that I yeah, because my, my mouse has disappeared, so I can't click on anything anymore. Okay. Now so. we can see a rendering of a lobby. Oh, you can see that. But do you yeah. see it full screen? Yeah. Do you see it full screen? Pretty much, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll turn okay. away again. Okay. So it is. People can see it. Yes. This okay. is the title. We see the title page. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, but basically I'm gonna run through the whole project, um, particularly focusing on the, how the designs come about and then also the sort of technical side of, side of it and some of the ups and downs as well. Um, so the project started with um, me being approached by the, 
well, it wasn't just me, actually. They, uh, the hospital approached um, half a dozen mosaic makers um, to put forward proposals for their new children's hospital, their build building. Um, this is one of the architect's drawings showing the uh, entrance lobby to the building. It's quite an interesting building because um, obviously they're trying to make it child friendly and uh, but they wanted it to reflect the the environment, the natural environment of um, California, Northern California. And so what they did, they themed the floors of the hospital according to the altitude. So the ground floor was the sort of beach level. And then the first floor was the sort of redwood forest because they're slightly up the hill. And then um, the top floor was the mountain tops and the basement was the, under the sea. So, so they already had established this kind of overall theme connected to out, the altitude. Um, they were asking us to look at two floors, um, the ground floor, the entrance lobby, and the first floor, which is the Redwood Forest floor. And you can see in their um, initial sketch they've done here, they, they've actually put in, I think it's one of my fish ponds as, as an indication of what they imagine the mosaic might be. I get that quite a lot. I get <laughs> architects use the fish pond as a kind of, here's a mosaic and then then I'd have to spend my time trying to convince them that maybe they don't want a fish pond um anyway so that that was the, the theme um obviously the hospital hadn't been was only just being built so mostly in the in the initial phase I'm just working from the architect's drawings uh and uh a site visit just to see see the building in progress. Um, the initial design concepts were done just to sort of sketch ideas to, to start a conversation with the client about what, what these mosaics might be. So they'd already kind of indicated they what they like fish ponds. So um, I had this idea of maybe doing these rock pools as um, a series of circular mosaics that might be in the floor depicting, yeah, what you, what you might find in a rock pool instead of the usual goldfish thing, you could have an octopus or crabs and starfish and various um, animals from the seashore. I also I was actually quite keen on this design. This was um, there was some the large columns that were in the foyer. Um, I thought that'd be really good to do like a wrap around um, mosaic around the column. Mm -hmm. um, so I was quite keen on this one. Uh, this is the sort of mock up I did of what they might look. Kind of had this image of sort of rocky outcrops with different seabirds and then these kind of hokusai kind of waves crashing up against the rocks. Um, but they very quickly informed me that we weren't, I wasn't allowed to use the columns because they were an integral part of the heating system. So I couldn't block them up. So that, that was that out. <clears throat> For the, um, that was the first floor. Um, trying to find ideas for the, sorry, that was the ground floor, the first floor. Um, I was struggling a bit more with because obviously the, their overall theme was um, the Redwood Forest, but I'm looking to do mos floor mosaics. So I, I was really struggling to imagine how, these are some initial sketches, trying to work out how I was gonna work on the theme of these huge, huge trees that 
are obviously all about the vertical space when I'm working on the floor. Um, I did, I quite like this. Um, I don't know if you know, redwood, redwoods quite often grow in a ring from, from the roots of an older tree that was there before. So you get these sort of magical rings of trees. I thought maybe something on that idea would work. So this is all part of my thought processes in trying to arrive at a design. Um, yeah, then I thought maybe if I had the tree circle with different uh, animal life of the forest around the edge. Huh. So I came up with this design as, as a potential one. And also this, because I it was interested in the whole idea that the, it was the fog that feeds the forest, the sea fogs that come in is where the forest gets the, its water from. So for something like that might work. Um, and then I just did some, this quite often happens with me, if I get an idea I like, I just do the one design and say, this is what I like. But if I'm not sure, I'll do three or four different designs. Um, so this is another another option maybe of something quite, yeah, a few more options you can tell. Didn't really know what to do. Uh, anyway, so the 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 initial they were happy with the initial designs, uh, uh, sketch ideas. Um, they like they like the rock pools, and I said, right, we're going to go the rock pools. Um, but they said they wanted me to design a bit further um, the first floor to something that was more in keeping with the, the way the rock pools might be. So I decided the best thing to do is just to go and sit in the Redwood Forest for a week and along the seashore. So we just went along looking at actual rock pools, photographing them, um, particularly notes of the wildlife there. And um, at the same time, doing research into what specific flora and fauna of the coast. And then also hanging out in the forest, doc documenting the forest and doing research into plants and animals of the forest. While I was there, I was quite particularly struck by how read the forest floor is and <clears throat> I quite like that it really showed up um red so I started looking more closely at the forest floor and the kind of animals that you might find on the floor um I also did some drawings while I was there of, of the forest, just to try and, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of trying to feel my way, um, what, what this might, what this whole thing might be. <clears throat> so after coming back from there, I, I'm then thinking, right, how can I develop these ideas? Um, I always kind of started off with the, because the, the ground floor, seashore one was the one that's clearest in my head that kind of led the way for all the designs um, what I wanted to do was by spacing the rather than doing one big mosaic have a sort of series of smaller mosaics that ran through the lobby uh, that I imagine children could like go and explore in that same way that you explore you might explore rock pools when you're a kid wandering around the beach so it was kind of like you'd wander through the lobby looking at different animals in the different um sections <clears throat> so i got did these initial sketches that just kind of indicated these kind of just shapes of mosaics that were i, I imagine like rocky outcrops with 
pools of water in in which you might find different animals and different sea plants then also produced you can see in the center of this one it just did a little sample panel um so the hospital could see what that mosaic looked like as so i think it's quite important to get them quite a good idea of um how that my design is going to be transferred into mosaic what, what that might actually be and what the material is as well and that, that kind of thing so for the for the redwood project um at the moment this is all happening at the same time um like i said i was still struggling a bit to figure out the one you see there on the left is my my interpretation that was kind of along the lines of the the ground floor seashore ones so here we've got like a maybe a little babbling brook and some that distinctive red floor and then on the right there uh, maybe a more geometric formal way of port portraying that idea which might look something like this as a sort of a combination because so my, my biggest problem here was as I was quite keen on doing the floor with all these sort of layers of leaves it's very interesting because how, how the the floor works is the leaves fall uh, and when they fall they're green and then they turn sort of yellow and then orange and then red and then black but as they're decomposing like that, then new ones are falling on the top. So there's a definite kind of layer with green ones on the top, yellow ones, orange, red. So I was kind of thinking how might how I might do that. But obviously that's a really complex thing to try and make in mosaic. So at the same time, I'm trying to think of a way that I could make that that wouldn't take. 10 years to make because it's quite detailed so so mainly at, at this stage I'm concentrating on the on the shapes that are in the floor and what what that what each one might be and how they might be different from each other then I could, uh, was a bit crazy but I came up with this um it's slightly realistic but it's also kind of form form formal sort of stylized version of these layers of leaf with um, the green leaves on the top and then the going down through through the sort of spectrum to black on the bottom so that that was you can see on the left the design with the square that was used for the sample um, that that way they were fine with they like that as the concept so then at that, this stage i then got the go ahead to go with the ground floor seashore and the first floor <clears throat> then then i had to work i had to go and visit the architects and um actually work on the floor plan, plans to decide exactly where these things are and it was at this stage that they said I I should design the terrazzo as well. So they were using a, a sort of modern resin bond, resin bonded terrazzo that came in a sort of small range of colours, um, which was actually a really good thing to do because it meant I could incorporate the how what the terrazzo would be like with the mosaic panels so here's one of the early designs placing the mosaic panels within the terrazzo and what i wanted to do on the ground floor was to create a floor that was like the waves lapping up on the beach so you'd have this big curve that you see is a glass wall um actually with some sherry warner hunter mosaics outside on the outside side of the wall and then you got all the all the light coming in so that that's where I wanted to, 
to be the C, so that would be blue. And um, I'm pointing at my screen, but obviously none of you can see that. <laughs> Uh, and then the sort of beach in a kind of yellow colour and a white, a sort of wet sand area and a white, you know, um, wave top bit. Is that I mean, just also as a way of linking the mosaic panels together? Um, this is the this is the first floor, which is a, a very long, drawn out corridor. So it was just a case of trying, thinking how they might be spaced along the corridor. <clears throat> but then I thought, oh, would I've got this um, idea of wandering around the beach. But for the first floor, we could actually make it a trial as it was a long pin area anyway. So that, and that seemed to fit quite nicely with the idea of walking through a forest trail, how you sort of follow a path. Um, it's not so easy to wander in any direction, is it, in the forest, forest? So then I started the first stage designs, still quite rough designs, just trying to make, get the, show that each mosaic panel will be different. So they're, they're the same, but different, with different ideas of which um, elements to portray in this sort of trial. Uh, and then there's the, the terrazzo worked up. Um, one of the problems I had that I think, in hindsight, I think I should have been a bit more strong with is that this is my design for the terrazzo, but the architects really toned it down and they used much more subtle colours. And I think that was a mistake but I let it go because, um, yeah, I think I, in hindsight, I think I should have insisted that they kept to the strong colors. Mm. So then next stage, now it's working up. So I've had shown the designs, the clients now come back and said, well, we like this, we don't like that. Can you put some more animals in? We don't want any that are just rocks like that. And can we, um, yeah, just so these these are worked up designs that then I then go back again after their comments and now now each panel has a sort of definite there uh, we've got a seal chasing a mackerel a shoal of mackerels this is actually this is the most tricky in terms of mosaic to make because this curves around a stairway but of course the stairway wasn't built so I have to make the mosaic without really knowing what that curve's like I'm just going by the architect's drawing and of course architect's drawings are never the same as what the guys eventually build so later on this proved to be quite tricky <laughs> then I got a sea lion and a pup an elephant seal and then into the rock pools, because um, the, those earlier ones were in the C section and now we're on the beach section. The rock pools each with their own. Um, you can see on the design there, I've written a little list of what, what plants and animals are featured in each panel. I also, when I'm doing designs for clients, I always draw a human figure at the same scale as the drawing, because I think it's a really good way of giving the client an idea of the scale of the mosaic. And also for, for, it's good for my benefit because I can, it helps me check that I'm not designing something that's gonna be really difficult to make in terms of the scale of the objects in it. So I can just immediately where you look at that figure in the drawing, you get an idea of like the scale of, of the pieces that you're probably going to have to cut. So these are the final designs for the first floor, forest one. 
So it all kind of worked up to the same way. Every single drawing I draw a person at the same scale. And you've got a bit of a, ri a river there and the, the um, and then a little pool where the, the trail begins and ends at each end with one of these little pools. <clears throat> so um, at this point, we've all, they've also um, discussed how we can make the um, terrazzo because we, we on the first floor because it's got such a long stretched out line of mosaic panels they're quite stretched out we wanted some something extra to help make that path more of a of a path and uh, so decided to make some um, fast glass leaves that would be dropped in the in the terrazzo. I actually saw this done in in the school in Spilimbergo. They um, had some cast glass pieces that they put into the terrazzo and then polished it off. <laughs> so that that was the idea was to have these three different glass pieces that were made by a local glass maker in California. Uh, they would be set in, and then on the ground floor of these sand dollars that would be made cast in bronze and set into the floor at um, particular points for visitors. So that was it. All the, all the designs are now approved and we can go on to construction. So um, as you can see, all my drawings are just colouring pencils on paper. So. Uh, I do everything pretty much by hand. So I use a squaring up method for scaling the design up. So here the designers put a square grids put on it. They're foot squares, just to make it easy. And then my problem here is that I've got these very unusual sort of blobby shapes. And I've got to make sure that the guys doing the terrazzo have the right shape blobs for my mosaics. <clears throat> so what I decided to do was to actually, first of all, make the blobby shapes in this um, glass fiber board. Um, I use glass fiber, fiber rather than wood because there's obviously problems exporting wood from Europe to the US. It's not very easy. And also because they're, I'm imagining they're going to be set in with the terrazzo, uh, it needs to be something that is going to be water resistant because the terrazzo would obviously get it, get it wet. So I couldn't use MDF or anything like that. And these bo these boards are quite rigid and can take a lot of punishment being moved around. So the first job was we put the grid on the boards and then drew the shapes of the um the mosaics onto the boards so they're eight foot by four foot boards so obviously i need more than one board to make up so every single mosaic panel started off with one of these um glass fiber boards once the glass fiber boards were done it was a simple matter of laying those on top of the paper for the mosaic and drawing around the outside yeah so here you can see i've drawn around the outside of the board and i've transferred the i use a simple coordinate grid on all the mosaics <coughs> transfer that onto the paper and then we start transferring the from the drawing each one square at a time transfer it scaling up the design onto the front of the paper that's Mark Fred doing that job. Once the drawings transferred onto the paper, it's done in permanent marker. So it actually soaks through the paper. So then when I turn the paper upside down, I've got the reversed image. Um, and then onto that, it, I then paint uh, just with a, a wash a tonal wash 
on the paper so that I end up with a <coughs> design in reverse, but also with all the tonal values put in. And I find if you're working with, um, I mean, I like it just for my own benefit, but also if I'm working with three or four people, maybe making one each panel, <coughs> um, it helps everybody work, know what they're doing easier. Um, there's this thing in, in mosaics that it almost doesn't matter which color you use, as long as the tonal value is right, it's going to it all pull together. So hence the, we get these washes. Once the wash is done, the um, cartoon is rolled up and put on the table. Um, the first job is to try and figure out how these different items are going to be made. So here I've got some sea anemones <coughs> trying to figure out some different different ways it can be made that aren't aren't completely literal. So we're not trying to make it like a photorealist sea anemone, but because I want them to be, you know, it's a mosaic, it should be simplified. And, and I want them simplified in such a way that they can be repeated and there's a kind of formula to making them. So you can see a couple of different versions before we settled on that final one. Um, so this is what the, the, the CN enemies look like. We also um, worked out a pattern for the different types of stone in the rock pools. <clears throat> Again, trying to keep it not overly complicated. So if you, you look at the this um, kind of pat pattern here for the stone, you if you look closely, you actually see that most of it is made from uh, the basic tile just cut once at a slight angle, and then they, they kind of rotate and with the odd extra cut bits, you can you can make a lot of it just using those two shapes. <laughs> and obviously then when it goes into the water, it just changes color to the blue to so signify it's the same stone, but underwater. And that's how we kind of progressed that, that aspect. And again, because we, we were representing a few different types of stone, so different stones, we worked out different patterns or different combinations of colors for each stone. Uh, as this, your seal. This is actually my favorite bit. It's um, help in one of the ponds and some different, a different type of an enemy. So basically, basically the, the mosaic's progressing. We got the drawing, we start laying the mosaic. It's pretty much laid from one end and we progress along it. And the, the tiles, these are unglad, uh, wax Winkleman's unglazed porcelain. Uh, so they're a really good floor tile. They're frost resistant, slip resistant, they're really strong. So they're stuck just with the flour and water glue onto the paper. Uh, as the mosaic progresses, you can see I've drawn some lines on the back of the mosaic there, because obviously you're looking at the back of the mosaic, and then that the, the a scalpels run in between in between the tiles to cut the sec sections. I I don't go with this sort of Spillenbergo way of cutting shape sections. I just keep my all my sections are regular rectangles. Uh, I find it's much easier way of working. <laughs> and then as as mosaic progresses, each section is cut away and you can see the, the rest of the cartoon rolled up there. So that as each section is cut away, a bit more is unrolled and we can carry on making the mosaic, um, which means you can actually make quite big mosaics in quite a small space because you're only ever working on sort of three foot of mosaic at one time. Of course, I didn't do it all on my own. 
Um, I got a, a team of um, working with me. Uh, Mark, who you saw in the earlier picture, and I've got Julia and oh, Claire there in the middle has worked for me for 20 years. Um, she's local London, but then uh, Julia on the left and Maria on the right are both Italians. Um, uh, Julia in particular is a, a pretty amazing mosaic maker uh, and works like a machine, like all Friuli people seem to do. So here's the studio under full steam ahead. You can see uh, on the table there, you can see the roll of paper at the bottom of the table where and it's wrapped up onto the top of the table. And, and so the mosaics be made on the top and then that'll be cut off and the next section pulled over. Uh, on the floor there, we've got uh, one, once the mosaic section's finished, it's laid out on the floor so it can be checked. And then Mark there on the on the right is uh, cutting box. It cut each section of the mosaic has a, a bespoke cardboard frame that it sits in to stop it moving in transit. Um, so that was the the ground floor, the coastal one done. Then we're moving on to the first floor and working out yeah I wanted to try and create a kind of that sort of dappled light that you get in the forest uh, which is quite tricky on this is the first try at it uh, and I didn't feel it didn't look like there was I couldn't distinguish between the light bits and dark bits you can see where the, the yellow leaves I've tried to go from light to dark to show dark areas and light areas, but it just wasn't enough. Um, <clears throat> so I actually chuck, pulled that all up and then remade it with these uh, more dramatic change between the dark areas and the light areas to try to sort of increase that, that feel of shadows and things on the forest floor. You can see the, the green leaves, which are the ones, the fresh ones that just fallen on the top. So they're they're done in they're done in glass, in vitreous glass. Um, the idea being that they're then going to match with the cast glass um, pieces that are in the floor. We also had quite good fun um, developing different ways of interpreting interpreting each plant. So this is a huckleberry. Um, so e each plant was, we devised a little sort of system that would be that plant. <clears throat> and same with the various flowers throughout, throughout the mosaic. Um, this is, this is quite a complicated one. This is a burl outcrop. So you get these big lumps of wooden kind of roots that come out in the forest and um, um uh, sorry, um, fern, fern leaves. <clears throat> and this is the river with um, an, uh, otter and some trout, steelhead trout, dragonfly. So that, that was kind of the mosaic all done. Uh, then it all gets packed up. First of all, all these boards, obviously they all got to be labelled. They're all shipped out to California. And then all the mosaics that are laid out on the floor and make sure that it's all there. There's no bits missing. They're all sh shaken. So each, pick, each section is picked up, um, held vertically and given a shake to make sure that they're properly stuck on. And obviously if they're not stuck on there, they're then restuck back. And then each section has, like I say, this um, cardboard collar that it sits in the boxes. And then they're all packed into these boxes um, 
with obviously because there's got a lot of mosaics so they're all labeled sections and uh, which panel and which floor so then um, myself and Mark go out to um, install set set down the glass fiber panels for the Toazzo guys because that's obviously got to happen before we do the mosaics unfortunately when we get to the site it looks like this which is where our mosaics meant to be um, so we they were running way behind so we had to do a lot of rejigging to get the um get the schedule working again so moving from one bit area to another and first of all I, i'm painting lines on the floor for the terrazzo guys to fix the steel rails and then we're we're setting the glass fiber panels down they just drill to the floor temporarily and then also the um had these little templates made so they're not for the glass because they've got to make a, a void for the glass glass so first of all i got had to make these plugs so that they could be set down on the floor and then when the terrazzo's finished they could be pulled up and be replaced with the cast glass So then we're, we're laying out there. You can see the steel rails, a couple of the panels and the cast glass plugs. And then once that's all done, then the terrazzo guys can come in and start laying the terrazzo behind. So we just get to sit and watch them work for a change. Once that's done, then we'll, the, so I, I, I go then go back to London, sort everything else, and then we all head over to do the installation. I find it really good to have the same people who made the mosaic do the installation. It's great, it's great for us all because we're seeing the results of the work, it was, but it also means that they're as careful with the installation as they are with how they made it, you know. So if anything goes wrong, they know that they can fix it and <clears throat> it gets that same attention to detail. Um, the first thing we do on site is the whole mosaic is laid. Obviously the paper's now facing up because that's the front. Uh, it's just laid dry as a, like a practice run into the hole. There we're making sure it fits or, or it's telling us it doesn't fit. Uh, and we're, we're also getting the optimum placing once it's all laid out into the space then each piece is lifted again put back in the box but they're lifted in the reverse order so that uh marks support you if you can just see by my feet where i've kind of marked where each section is on the floor with a felt pen <clears throat> that helps in knowing where to trowel out the adhesive so you don't put out too much adhesive um and it also get, allows you to adjust, if, you know, and stick to that adjustment. So in that Mark, Mark gets mixing, he gets them, he always gets all the rotten jobs of cleaning buckets and mixing and packing and all that. So he's mixing up the stuff. And then we start laying and, and we, we lay, we take, we put down the adhesive, we, fix the sections and then immediately they've been fixed they're da the paper's damped once it's it's damped it's tamped down because it's no good tamping down the mosaic while the paper's dry because you need the paper to relax before you can tamp it flat uh, then we carry on laying uh, and removing the paper while the cement's still wet. So it's literally one, one row's being laid, one row's, have the row behind it's having the paper removed or is being damped and the row behind that is having the paper removed. <clears throat> so we've got, um, that's Maria there fixing, Mark's bringing the pieces over, uh, Claire's, 
is uh, snagging. So if there's any any anything that needs adjusting while it's still wet, she can do that. And taking the paper off. <coughs> This is the bit that wrapped around the stairs. So it took quite a lot of work to do that. Once the mosaics are down, we've then got to go straight in. Because it's a building site and there's lots of other work going, we, what we needed to do was do each panel, at one panel at a time, fix it, clean it, grout it, and then cover it up because of the other building work going on. There's so much dust flying around and all that. We always use dark gray or black grout. Um, so this is the grout, grouting process. And there you can see, we've literally had to cut a hole in the, in the protective floor to lay the mosaic. And then straight away, as soon as the mosaics lay, all this gear appears on top of it. <laughs> it's a bit chaotic. And, I, and then we took our weekend to go and see what, show everybody what a redwood forest looks like. Yeah, taking the paper off. There you can see how the, how the paper changes color when it's wet. And once it goes that dark color, you, we kind of know it's ready to peel back. And more grouting and then we got we've also got to um take these plugs out of the terrazzo now and start fixing the past glass pieces into that into there and then they get just grouted to finish them off and also with our bronze medal our bronze uh, what are they call sand dollars uh they're sort of fit bed fixed to to come up level with the terrazzo and then that's it that's this is it finished so there, there's the seal chasing the mackerel that's the uh the, the shoal of mackerel going into the entrance and then we've got a turtle chasing uh it because turtles eat jellyfish i didn't know that before i did this project um, elephant seal. This is the whole hospital is full of other artworks. So it's quite a lively place. This is the stair rat. There's me favorite bit, the kelp. More fishy ponds. <clears throat> And then upstairs, so the, the trail starts with a, the round pond and then you follow through to this. This is a fern glade with butterflies. We did the butterflies in glass as well. And this is the burl outcrop, the lizard there. And then we've got a fallen tree. There's actually, if you look at the tree trunk, there's actually a movement joint through the center of that. That was the only movement joint we we couldn't get around. And then we've got this, I, I quite, I like this one a lot. This was um, bear and raccoon tracks going through a sort of mud patch. I quite like that one. That was good fun to make. And then we've got another fallen tree with a mouse and a tree frog. There's the, um, the river with the steelhead trout. And then this this was a kind of area that was going, heading towards the next floor up. So the idea was it was like a path with steps and it's got a uh, human footprints and a light mountain lion and a little snake there. And then it then the whole thing finishes with another little round pond. Yeah, yeah, that's the detail of the glass. So it's actually um it's not totally flat, the glass, it's got uh, this sort of leaf texture to it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that, that's, that's about it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, we have a couple of questions. Some right. Lori is asking um, for you to repeat the name of the unglazed porcelain tile. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the manufacturer is um, Winkleman, which spelled with a W, w yeah. Uh, uh, it's a French unglazed. It's, it's not dissimilar from the sinker tiles you might know. Mm -hmm. um, you can but you can buy it in the states. I think Wits End carries it, um, and there's also a Winkleman outlet. I think in California as well. <clears throat> um, Suzanne um, Aweda from Mosaic Oasis says um, that she sells um, Winkleman's at Mosaic Oasis in Arlington. Oh, great. There you go. Um, it, I, it's, it's, it used to be much easier to use than it is because um, it used to be like the sinker flat on both sides, but now it's got a, a ribbed back, mm. which is a bit of a pain. Mm. But it's still a nice tile. It's very strong. It's a good practical tile. So Anna is asking from start to finish, how much time did the project require? I was worried someone was going to ask that. Uh, <laughs> so if you're just talking about um, making the mosaic, that was probably a good a year, at least a year. Yeah. But from start to finish, the project was more like six years um, because the the gaps in between doing the designs getting them approved were really big uh, and then also the building was delayed by a, a good year so after we finished the mosaic we had to wait it just sat in boxes for a year while they were trying to get the building ready and that's why when we eventually did go, they still weren't really ready for it. Um, so overall, yeah, it was years and years, but um, much longer than it should have been. <laughs> um, I'm getting all kinds of um, accolades here about your presentation. Oh, okay. Bravo, fantastic job, fascinating. Um, let's see what else. Thank you. Lots of juicy questions. Yeah. <laughs> what adhesive was used to ground? Um, a laticrete, which wasn't actually my choice. I think my initial choice was uh, mafe. Um, and I did get the map, local map I rep to come and spec it all out. I usually, for a big job, I would always get in the rep and get them to write a specification because you want to be using the same um, company materials throughout the whole system. Yeah. So I, I actually got the map I rep in and he did a spec. Um, but then the, the architects turned around and said, no, we're we're using laticrete throughout the whole building. So you have to switch to laticrete, which is great. It was good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Suzanne is asking, um, what is longer, the design stage, the fabrication stage, or the installation stage? Uh, the installation, I'll go, I'll go in reverse order. The installation is really quick. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, this is a slightly unusual job because it's, it was so big, but it was also very interrupted. So like normally I would go through and do an installation like that in a couple of weeks. I mean, my normal installations are less than a week uh, for a job that might have taken three months to make. Um, the design stage, the design, the actual time I'm designing is probably another two weeks but quite often that stretches from 
doing the designs to getting them approved, especially if you're working with committees and boards and trustees and stuff, can take much, much longer. Um, but yeah, this is a big project. So this is a good, uh, well over a year just of making the mosaic. Okay. Um, what colors of grout were used? Uh, dark gray only. Dark gray only. If, if you're working on the floor, it's going to end up dark gray anyway, whatever color you use, just through foot traffic. But yeah, it's just dark, dark gray anthracite. But it also shows up the mosaic best, I think. Because anything, it's got to be dark because otherwise it shatters the image. Dark, dark grout pulls the image together. If it, if it, so it's got to be overall a darker color than your your mosaic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes. I have a question. Oops. Can I ask a question? Instead of typing, it's kind of long. Sure, sure. What is the, um, why was the mosaic installed prior to the completion of the building? And were you worried about it getting, I mean, it must have been protected somehow, <clears throat> but it seems like it was still a pretty major construction site. Yeah. Is there a reason for that? The, uh, there is, but it's not a good reason. Um, really, it should have been done much later. They, sh mm -hmm. they should all that building work should have been finished before we turned up to do the installation. And there's not really any sensible reason why we couldn't have waited. But because the whole building was so far behind that lots of the contractors were the the, the main contractor was running into penalty clauses. Lots of the contractors were fighting each other to get in and get their contracts finished. And basically, the attitude of the main contractor was, if there's a space, you can do it, get in and do it. Because they just wanted to get as many of the tasks kicked off as they could. Mm -hmm. But yeah. so normally you would wait until the building Yeah, the normally was... I'd like to go in with what I call knobs and knockers. You know, mm -hmm. so when they're doing those final fixtures and fittings and it's all nice and clean, mm -hmm. uh, that, that was a complete nightmare fixing like that because they're literally scaffolding everywhere. There's a lot of dust in the air. It was, it yeah. was not a deal. Okay, thank you. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Antonia is asking, is it ready for viewing now? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's been completed for a, a couple of years. Okay. So it's it's you can you can you can wander in there. You can't get you can't get to the. I don't think you can get to the first floor if you're not a patient. But mm -hmm. you can definitely wander through the foyer, and also you can see the Sherry Warner Hunter uh, mosaics in the in the front section, which are good fun too. All right, all right. I think we've caught up on all of the. Um, questions and um, comments. So I want to um, give you a big thank you, um, Gary. People found this, um, you know, like totally amazing, fascinating, um, and on and on. So kudos to you. Thank you for sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, okay. I that's it for this evening. Thank you, Gary, again. Good, good night from London. <laughs> good night from Waltham. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Okay. Thanks, Amy. That was great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Gary. It was absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Thanks. Amy. Thanks.